It's a great honor for me to present the module of pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes to you. Why is this such an important topic? I strongly believe that only if we understand the pathophysiology of diabetes, we have the right background to find diabetes risk and to diagnose diabetes correctly. Furthermore, only with the understanding of pathophysiology, we have the optimal basis for performing the right diabetes treatment for the patient. But why are people getting diabetes? The answer is insulin resistance. Insulin resistance means that the insulin the pancreas is producing is not acting correctly anymore. The reason for this is that the receptors for insulin on fat or muscle cells are not functioning or are missing. This leads to an enormous overproduction of insulin because the pancreas try to compensate this and this creates extreme stress for the insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas. But what is the reason for this? Two processes interact in the process of developing insulin resistance together. Firstly, the body's fat tissue, especially the visceral fat and the hepatic fat, secrete adipokines and hepatokines. These hormones increase insulin resistance. Even worse, the more visceral fat the patient has, the higher his risk of becoming insulin resistant is. Moreover, the more hepatic fat the patient has, the faster he will progress to diabetes. The second effect, due to the already existing insulin resistance, the cells in the body cannot open their cells for glucose to enter. This basically starts a devil's circle which is making insulin resistance worse. Because the insulin level in the blood rise continuously, initiating a growth of insulin production and finally leading to an exhaustion of beta cells. This is a problematic pathophysiology of diabetes. In conclusion of this module, here are my key facts for you. Firstly, type 2 diabetes develops because of insulin resistance. Secondly, the presence of visceral fat and hepatic fat make the patient getting more insulin resistance and also a more aggressive kind of diabetes. Thirdly, Breaking insulin resistance is the ultimate goal in diabetes therapy. Fourthly, using drugs for an early treatment may help the patient and have the potential to break insulin resistance as long as the patient is taking these drugs regularly. Finally, increasing physical activity, especially daily physical activity, is the most natural way of breaking insulin resistance and this has the most sustainable long-lasting effect for our patients. Therefore, my personal wish for you is that you can use the understanding of pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes development to use this knowledge to motivate your patients to identify individual diabetes risk or undiagnosed diabetes or using this knowledge to help the patient better understanding their situation and being active in doing something against diabetes.